Hello, everyone. If this is working correctly, we should be live and streaming to you again, if this is working correctly, on three platforms. Hello to everybody tuning in on LinkedIn and on YouTube and on Periscope. Again, if this is working the way it is intended. Welcome to the SDX Next live show. You're witnessing a historic event because this is our very first one, at least of this kind, hosted by, uh, brought to you by SDX Next. And today we're going to be talking with Martin Zabava and we're going to be talking about software development processes. So Martin, how are you doing today? Great, great, happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Awesome, happy to have you here. So I take it you're broadcasting from the Amazonian jungle there. Well, actually it's our office, but uh, uh, well, we have a lot of Python in our office. So, uh, so you can figure we, we also have to have jungle. Yeah, I can see a Python right now on your screen. <laughs> Taking this kind of mask on, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, all right, great. Look, the first part of this is on you guys. If you could leave us a comment on whichever platform you're viewing this on, whether you can see us, whether you can hear us, whether this is all you know broadcasting correctly for you, that would be a great help because we want to be sure that you know on a technical level we're all good to go. So just make sure to leave a comment. I do believe there's a slight delay. So if you leave a comment and you want a, an answer from us, then just be sure to take that into account that there might be a little bit of uh, delay. All right, I'll be waiting for some of those first comments to roll in. Now, I think the first thing to tackle here is you know, for the people tuning in and slowly trickling in, what would you say this, in terms of the subject we're going to tackle here, who would this live be for? And who do you, do you especially hope is tuning in today? So the, the, the first uh, obvious answer is uh, a technical manager or uh, a manager that uh, 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 has an impact on, uh, on the processes. But actually, uh, uh, I really hope that after this, uh, uh, this live, this talk, uh, you will think that this is for everyone, that the right process uh, is a process that uh, uh, is adaptive and it's being adapted by the people who are inside of the process. So everybody uh, from top to, to bottom uh, should be able to contribute on, uh, uh, on the design of the processes. So that's why I believe that this life uh, should be valuable for everyone who is dealing with processes inside of the organization. And in a good organization, everybody should be dealing with processes on a daily basis. OK, yeah, yeah, I think that's very true. So. If you're not a manager, you definitely don't have to leave us just now because you can learn all about how processes work and also about the difference between well-designed processes, badly designed processes. We should be tackling that too. I see the first comments that we are definitely live on Periscope and all good on LinkedIn. So thank you for that. I might feature one of those comments because why not? Here you go. Thank you, Adam, for letting us know. Now. Still waiting for a few more people to join. I wanted to ask you, Marcin, if you could tell our audience you know, about your experience. So what experience do you have that, you know, is, this is going to sound a bit rude, but it has to, that makes you an authority to speak on this subject? Yeah, so uh, I have quite a lot of experience with processes. Uh, and it started very early, early for me. Um, you can actually say that. Processes are uh, like algorithms, uh, and uh, I studied uh, um, uh, information technology and also management. So uh, when you have in mind that this is the background, then algorithms that can be uh, run on people instead of machines is uh, an obvious uh, area of interest. Um, yeah. And uh, starting the career uh, uh, in project management, uh, this became quite obvious for me that uh, processes uh, uh, will be something that can uh, boost the productivity not only of, uh, uh, of uh, me, myself, but also uh, for everyone around me. Um, and at some point when I uh, became the, the, the head of uh, uh, product, uh, project management uh, at one of the companies, uh, uh, I basically created um, uh, a department of project managers, uh, an office of project managers, uh, uh, then uh, it was really a, a testing ground for um, uh, producing and designing processes uh, en masse. So 
there uh, okay. were a lot of processes to to be implemented uh, we did thus uh, we we ended up with uh, uh, processes that uh, really um, made our uh, life easier every day work for not only us project managers but also for uh, everyone in the teams uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, in a nutshell my experience with processes okay and just for the people tuning in who you know don't know you personally uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your current role at STX Next and how that relates to processes? Yeah, so uh, I'm head uh, of one of the offices of STX Next. Uh, um, uh, we have five offices and uh, one of them in the city of Wrocław uh, uh, is my office. Uh, so I'm responsible uh, for everything that happens uh, inside of the office. So that already gives uh, 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 quite a ground for, for uh, designing new processes, uh, but uh, even to more extent, uh, uh, it, it gives a ground to um, um, get people participated in uh, in uh, creating the processes, in modifying them, uh, and so on. I'm uh, dealing daily with uh, multiple teams, uh, and each of these team, uh, you can say that they implement their own versions of of, of those processes, those company wide processes. So. Um, um, there's a lot to, to, to be uh, observed in that kind of environment. And my second role is uh, uh, also to work on a company level uh, and contribute to, uh, to the processes that uh, work uh, above uh, one of the office. Uh, so uh, this is another part that uh, uh, really uh, takes advantage of the, of the process experience that uh, uh, me, but not only me, uh, have at STX. Okay, so that sounds like a lot of processes on different levels to keep track of, right? All right, so no, not to not yeah. to mention that uh, uh, actually our work in a software house um, um, gives us the opportunity to uh, work with many different organizations, uh, uh, many of them uh, producing uh, uh, code uh, uh, also on daily basis. So they also have their own processes. We're working with startups. We're uh, working with uh, uh, scaled up startups with uh, uh, established uh, product companies, with corporations. So there's a very wide variety of, uh, of different organizations, all of them implementing uh, consciously or sometimes unconsciously processes. And uh, uh, th th there's really a lot of material to analyze. OK, yeah. All right, so I think it'll be great to delve more into that a little bit later. But first, just to kind of frame the conversation, Let's make sure that we're all on the same page when we talk about processes. So I'm not looking for a dry definition here, but if you could say in a few words what you mean when you talk about processes, then we can all kind of think about the same thing. Yes, yeah, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can think of a process as, uh, as an algorithm, but uh, uh, it uh, doesn't have to be uh, run on, on machines, on computers. Uh, it's uh, uh, run, uh, let's call it that, it's run on people. So people are the actors uh, uh, who are uh, doing the job inside of the, of the process or, or can be one of the actors. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, when you're saying that uh, that's how we are doing things here, uh, you actually are, are describing your processes. And some of them are formalized, uh, uh, and, and this is uh, what you usually think of uh, when you say process, but some of them uh, may not be. So uh, a way of doing things, a repetitive way, uh, is already a process. OK, a repeated way of doing things is a process. That makes perfect sense to me. And I wonder then, you know, on the one hand, OK, now knowing what we're talking about is, why would this topic be important, especially on a on a management level? You know, when I think about processes, I think well, there's two scenarios that I think of. One scenario is that you know, in in my work, and I work in the marketing team, we have some repeatable tasks. And when I encounter a repeatable task where we don't have a process, it kind of hurts, right? It's like we should have a checklist for this, and why don't we have a checklist yet? On the other hand, I feel like processes get this kind of People, when they think of processes, they also think of big corporations. They think of this very structured way of working that can be sometimes a constraint. So how would you justify this? And how would you say that processes are still important? And especially you know, in the software development world, why are they valuable? So this is certainly true. Processes uh, uh, don't have uh, uh, a good PR. 
And uh, uh, most of the people, uh, when they are thinking about processes, uh, they, they see a big corporation uh, with very rigid processes and, uh, and the one that uh, uh, you don't really uh, like to, to, to work there. Um, uh, but actually, I think that uh, w what people hate in big corporations is not the processes, but it's uh, how the hierarchy kills initiatives. Uh, um, and uh, nobody wants to uh, work uh, uh, in, an, in an environment where, where he or she uh, uh, is feeling like being a cog in a, in a big machine. And uh, we're expecting to uh, to be able to use our creativity and uh, and a common sense uh, in our daily work, um, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, well, just add value. Uh, so, so this is uh, what uh, processes should allow us to do. And if they are not, then then they are just not good processes. Um, uh, and uh, having said that, uh, you can already uh, spot why I think that processes are uh, good for for everyone and uh, not only for uh, for the organization, uh, like big organizations, like like corporations. And why why processes? Uh, why I would like to have processes in uh, in my life and my work. Uh, uh, this is because uh, uh, processes helps us in uh, dealing with complexity. And we're uh, living in a world that uh, we get more and more complexity, especially at work. Um, and if we are fighting with complexity, we want to have some kind of uh, mental guidelines that will help us uh, um, lessen the mental load that we or people around us have to carry. Uh, so uh, something that will help us not to forget about things or uh, not to uh, reinvent the, uh, the myth of, uh, of, of how, how we uh, are doing things. We want to figure it out uh, once and then uh, uh, maybe revise it from time to time, but we already figure it out uh, well and uh, this is the best way of doing a certain thing. Then we want to uh, uh, be able to, to repeat that, not to uh, do it uh, differently every time and, and putting extra energy in, in, in doing so. So that's the one aspect, the complexity. Uh, yeah. This is uh, something in our world that uh, makes processes more uh, more important. And I suppose second, when you, sorry, just what comes to my mind because when we're talking about software development in particular, then I suppose complexity is a big part of that, right? Especially here, it's uh, dealing with complexity is a big part of the job, right? Yeah, it's also kind of familiar because uh, if you're working with uh, people who are dealing with algorithms daily, then uh, of course it, it's way easier to uh, to uh, advertise the uh, process to that than, than to to other people. But the complexity that that's one part. But the second part in our uh, uh, our world is that uh, everything pushes towards automation. And uh, if you are able to automate your uh, daily tasks, then you get a boost in productivity. And uh, many people are around productivity, are after productivity uh, now. So this is the second uh, drive that uh, that contributed to uh, to growing interest in uh, in processes. Uh, if you already figured out process for something and it's uh, uh, well quantified, then it's uh, way easier to automate uh, part of it. Or maybe sometimes it will even all of it. So, so that's that's the second drive. Okay. So in short, it's about managing that complexity and also saving effort in terms of uh, in terms of getting stuff done. Would that be a good summary? I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. I think that justifies uh, a conversation about processes in the software development world. But I'm still thinking back to this person that may not be, you know, they're entering an organization, let's say. And I really want to, want to know what you would tell somebody who enters an organization. They see those processes and what they see isn't exactly a process, but it's more like bureaucracy, right? So how should they tackle the situation where they enter an organization? and they're not happy with the, with the processes that they see, they have feedback for the processes that they see, how should this be structured? So when you are joining an organization, um, you have a lot of uh, things that you have to uh, digest. Um, 
and processes uh, uh, i admit can really contribute to to the amount of of things that you have to mm. learn um at the same time it's it's quite important to uh, from day one uh, uh, tell to that person that uh, uh, those are established way of doing things here but they are uh, established uh, they are established certainly for, for for some reason because we figure out that this is the the, the best known way to, to do things but uh, uh, firstly conditions change and secondly we uh, may have not find the best way so um, uh, you as a new person are allowed to suggest changes in those processes so this is the part about uh, being uh, adaptive and uh, and uh, building in the the, the mechanism uh, that will uh, improve the process with time. If someone new comes in, uh, then uh, uh, he or she uh, brings uh, 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 their own experience and their own view, a fresh one. So uh, uh, you, you should really try to leverage uh, uh, those and and uh, um, allow that that person to to participate in changing the processes. Uh, Important to think, though, is that uh, you should also advise that kind of person to focus uh, uh, on a limited uh, set of processes. Because you, okay. you can't uh, um, make good suggestions uh, if you don't uh, know the, uh, the, the full context around the process. And uh, if you want to do things uh, good, then, uh, as in most things, you have to focus on uh, on limited number of things. So. Um, uh, I would probably to that kind of person say that uh, you should focus on uh, on the processes that impact uh, or you will learn that will impact your daily uh, activities most and uh, uh, think about them creatively. So uh, uh, ask why this is done in a that way and not in different, mm -hmm. suggest changes um, and, and observe. Okay, so from the perspective of somebody who is affected by a process, it's about getting some context about why the process is a certain way. And now I'm thinking from the perspective of a manager, how can I help the people joining my organization get this sort of context and understand why the process is a certain way? There's really not a great answer to this uh, because you, you can't uh, overwhelm someone with full context of everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you have someone who uh, already decided on which processes uh, they want to uh, focus on, then uh, a talk is, is a great uh, a great tool. So uh, when someone uh, has questions or uh, suggestions about uh, uh, about a certain process, it's best uh, uh, always to to uh, talk with that person. R uh, wrong approach would certainly be um, um, uh, to to uh, redirect that person to some kind of uh, uh, Wikipedia, internal uh, Wikipedia, or or other. Um, uh, <laughs> boring and, uh, and uh, uh, hard to digest documentation. It's, uh, uh, it's best to uh, show the process as a living, uh, um, living thing that happens every day and people are involved. So uh, uh, I think in my experience, the, the, the best way is very simple. So uh, let, let's just do a mental simulation of, of okay. if we will implement those changes in a process, what will happen? And then okay. ask question. Okay, so we, we did implement this, and what will happen in this kind of corner case? Or okay. uh, if uh, other uh, process that was reliant on our process uh, uh, will get uh, uh, what it needs or not? So mm -hmm. that kind of questions, uh, uh, firstly, show um, uh, some uh, blind holes or, or weak spots in, in proposed, uh, uh, proposed uh, improvement solution change. To the process, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it, it also um, shows that that you have an open mind that this suggestion suggestion really can be um, implemented uh, if it uh, will turn out that uh, uh, that it works or it has chance to to work mm -hmm. better than the current process. Uh, so mm -hmm. that kind of simulation is is a great way to uh, at the same time uh, analyze uh, critically the idea and uh, uh, show that uh, um, uh, the person who comes in with suggestion is really welcomed and is really um, uh, encouraged to, to make that kind of suggestions and uh, they will be, uh, uh, they will be uh, thought through. Okay, so I suppose the gist is 
when somebody has questions, you kind of drag them into the process of designing the process so they can understand the context a little bit more just through kind of action, right? Oh yeah, I strongly believe that everybody should participate in, uh, in uh, at least improving processes. Okay, everybody should participate. I mean, I think that's a great idea to strive for. I have just a few technical remarks at this point. First of all, more and more people are joining. Really happy to see you. Uh, leave a comment here, you know, or wherever you're watching this, because we are broadcasting on three channels at once, and I am very obviously very excited about this. <laughs> So leave a comment about you know, what questions you have for Marcin regarding processes, and we'll try to answer those. And actually, there's one comment that we already received that I think would be interesting to address before we move on. This comment is from Łukasz Krzybowski, and he's asking, where is the trade-off between the proper number of official processes and excessive bureaucracy? I am sensing a kind of it depends answer, but I'll let you address that. So the role of FAMP would be if uh, uh, people inside of the organization um, uh, really uh, feel that the processes are still helping. Um, it, it's quite easy to, to create uh, that many processes that people uh, get lost. Or uh, it's quite easy to create processes that are so rigid that uh, uh, people uh, are paralyzed. Um, mm. So that, 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 that's the trade-off. Uh, more processes you, you implement, uh, the more rigid is the organization. And the only um, uh, escape from it is uh, uh, creating a uh, kind of uh, culture that uh, uh, thrives uh, uh, on processes, but, but in, in a way uh, uh, of improving them. So mm -hmm. um, another act, uh, aspect that is... Uh, uh, really important is building a, a feedback culture. So if mm -hmm. you have a feedback culture in your organization, it's um, uh, way easier to, uh, to build uh, the, the continuous improving um, uh, mindset. And with this mindset, uh, uh, no processes can uh, make an organization too rigid. But at the same time, uh, still processes can uh, make uh, your organization too, too complex. So when you start to notice that, adding new processes uh, um, uh, adds complexity and not reduces complexity uh, uh, in the work of, of, of uh, uh, people every day, then this is uh, uh, probably maybe not a, not a stop point, but a point in which you should um, uh, rethink everything and uh, let's say in a technical words, refactor what you already have. Uh -huh. So. Uh, uh, designers uh, also would say that uh, the perfection is uh, not when uh, uh, there's nothing new to add, but there's uh, nothing uh, left to to remove from the product. So uh, okay. I think it's, it's the same with processes. Okay, so yeah, my mind was going in a similar direction when you started mentioning that the way to address the trade off is to make sure that people don't feel frustrated, people don't feel constrained, and you can only know how people feel if you build a feedback loop, if this information actually gets to you. So I think that is that is really important to actually address this. So now I think, you know, given that there is such a thing as too many processes, as adding complexity through processes, I wonder what your opinion is on which activities within, you know, on a company level, let's start there. You mentioned you're involved in this as well. So which activities on a company level are worth turning into processes? Like if you're, if you have like a green field, what would you start with in terms of turning these operations into processes? So obvious choices is, uh, uh, is something that uh, repeats itself uh, uh, quite often. So uh, recruitment is, uh, is very obvious. So recruiting new people and onboarding new people, uh, those are processes of starting something. And uh, um, in most of the organizations, uh, it, it happens uh, uh, quite often, regularly. So uh, those activities are, are great for, for uh, material for first processes. Um, and uh, also ending something. So, uh, for example, offboarding, uh, which consists of uh, some kind of knowledge transfer, removing accesses, um, uh, exit interviews, alumni relationships, uh, and so on. So th that's also something that that is uh, uh, a, a great subject for uh, for creating a, a process. Um, uh, in general, uh, things that uh, are uh, uh, happening uh, repeatedly. 
And uh, uh, another good uh, thing to look uh, uh, for is um, some activity that uh, requires uh, different people to act together, especially mm -hmm. if those people uh, are uh, not working together on a daily basis, but mm -hmm. you need all of them to uh, to accomplish something. So for example, onboarding new uh, new person and preparing uh, everything for uh, for their work. Right, uh, right. So that that's that's great for uh, uh, for creating processes. Uh, you yeah, also I think you know just to add on to this, I think uh, it's very true about onboarding. I mean, I wouldn't call myself a, a process expert by by any measure, right? But just from the perspective of somebody you know who joined a company like SDX Next, or just hearing my uh, my friends who join other companies, it's a big test of uh, a company's processes the uh, what happens during the onboarding right and this is you know this is talked about between people and it's a uh, first impressions are everything really and this is a uh, uh, an opportunity for companies to really show that everything is well organized and that this complexity is addressed because there's a lot to address during the first days and that it's a smooth onboarding yeah so so first impression but also uh, you can uh, make someone ready to add value uh, in a week, uh, but if you uh, don't uh, do your job uh, uh, when there's time to onboard someone, then uh, uh, they uh, may not be able to do their work uh, in a uh, most efficient way uh, for for months. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's that, that, that that's really a, a huge price to uh, to tr try to uh, achieve a good process. Now, it also makes sense, uh, a lot of sense to, to have a learning process in place when, uh, when something is ending. So uh, offboarding is, is, uh, mm. of a person is one example, some kind of exit interview, but uh, uh, this also applies to, to many other things. Um, in a project organization, uh, you can do uh, uh, post-mortem analysis of, of every engagement, uh, or uh, you're also doing uh, um, uh, a retrospective inside of Scrum, so this is the same mm -hmm. uh, uh, process. Um, if you are working uh, in a product environment, you're creating uh, a product, then uh, um, use use analysis of uh, of a certain feature that goes live after uh, some time, how it is used, uh, how people are interacting with it. Uh, uh, that kind of analysis, that that kind of, in other words, uh, a feedback loop embedded into the system. That's also something that uh, you can get from uh, from establishing a good process. And uh, uh, thanks to feedback loops, you you have a good chance to to create a, a real learning environment um, and uh, and contribute to to improving uh, processes, products, and uh, and so on. Yeah. Absolutely. Another process that, that there's really a lot of uh, areas. Uh, which are well suited for for being full of processes. Okay, um, let's have one more then. <laughs> okay, so if I can only pick one more, I would uh, go for people evaluation and, uh, okay. and people growth. So um, it, it's important uh, that uh, everybody uh, feels that they're uh, treated uh, equally, that uh, you care about uh, uh, their growth, their um, development, uh, but mm. uh, also that, that you uh, uh, evaluate their work, their achievements uh, regularly. So uh, it, it would really be embarrassing if, uh, if uh, I, for example, would uh, forget about someone and uh, uh, not do that. So, so that's one thing uh, where, where processes uh, uh, come in handy. Uh, but another thing is you can uh, really often hear about talent management, that talent mm -hmm. management is really a, a key area for uh, a manager, especially technical manager, uh, to, to pay attention to. And this is uh, true, of course, uh, but uh, uh, when you hear, uh, at least when I hear talent management, uh, I'm thinking about something uh, very uh, different for each person and something that is unique and uh, uh, requires uh, uh, or depends only on soft skills of, of doing things and uh, uh, and uh, it's not something that uh, can be turned into process. But again, w when you think about this, it's really important to have uh, a regular uh, sessions with uh, that kind of uh, mm. person. It's really important to follow up on things. It's really important to uh, motivate uh, um, uh, not 
once uh, a year, but uh, regularly. So mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things uh, um, that uh, if you have a lot of people uh, working with you, um, the scale goes up. And if you want to do it properly, you will have to have some kind of process to mm -hmm. uh, uh, to remember about uh, each step uh, and each uh, um, uh, each. Um, um, next follow up with uh, each person and uh, do it right w w without uh, uh, without compromising on the quality. You know, I'm curious if you could give us a little bit more detail about this because when I'm thinking of this talent management process or when I'm thinking about like regular growth review, I mean, in terms of actual steps, the first thing that comes to mind my mind is okay, schedule something once a month and you know talk with these people about how they're growing, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm sure the process goes beyond that. So if, it could, if you could give us just a peek into like what actual steps you take to make sure that this process works, what is your actual process? I think that could be very valuable for the people listening. So I can answer in, in two ways. Um, uh, first is a, a process uh, uh, for me to uh, uh, remember about uh, 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 growth plans that uh, uh, we uh, agreed and uh, that we have to agree on some kind of growth plan and uh, uh, in, in this process I uh, it's tightly connected to a growth review that we're having uh, at STX uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, it only happens uh, once a year or, or twice a year uh, there are mm -hmm. activities uh, uh, that uh, are happening uh, um, uh, every month or, or uh, even even every week so uh, that involves for example uh, uh, gathering feedback uh, uh, as we go from uh, people outside of stx who are uh, part of the of the engagement or mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing is uh, really taking the opportunity to uh, appreciate someone's uh, uh, um, so someone's achievement or, or good actions that that they took uh, right away. So so that, that that's really important uh, mm -hmm. from a feedback uh, perspective that uh, you should appreciate or or um, uh, make some um, uh, critical remarks uh, at uh, the time when, when something happens. But uh, okay. uh, also it's quite important to uh, make notes out of it. So, so you. Uh, you can summarize it uh, uh, on the next growth review. So um, that kind of things uh, uh, also creates uh, uh, small processes. Um, um, I, for example, have uh, uh, a separate file uh, for uh, noting every achievement of uh, of people uh, uh, with whom I'm working with. So okay. um, uh, that that pays uh, uh, off. Uh, every half a year, uh, because uh, I'm giving feedback right away, but at the same time, I remember about uh, those mm. things uh, uh, later on. Uh, so so that's, that's one answer. But the second answer is that it's really good, especially for, the, for, uh, for people who are um, really interested in their own growth, to create a tailored process for them. Uh, so uh, mm. usually, w when I uh, meet with someone uh, uh, on a separate, uh, regular sessions uh, uh, focused only or on on their growth, uh, first thing we, we're doing uh, is setting up rules, or in other words, we can also say that we're setting up a process. So mm -hmm. uh, we're agreeing that we will be meeting, uh, uh, um, for example, once a month, uh, and uh, uh, we will set up goals. Uh, we will uh, review goals, uh, we will uh, uh, do this certain things uh, on every meeting and uh, um, also we will do uh, those other things um, after some time but also regularly. So okay. you, you can say that, that you're creating a tailored uh, uh, framework uh, uh, for, for those kind of meetings uh, and uh, while it's uh, tailored to, to a specific person, or, or pair okay. of persons, actually, a uh, pair of people, uh, it's the kind of process. You know okay. what will happen next, you, you know what is being expected, you know uh, uh, how, how this will uh, uh, contribute to your growth. Okay, so I think what I'm reading between the lines here is also that, well, maybe not so between the lines, you just did mention it's a tailored process for each individual. So you're leaving kind of room for actually adjusting the process so it's not the exact same steps for every person you're managing, 
but actually it, it differs from person to person. I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting that correctly. Oh yeah, that definitely. Uh, so uh, actually, it's it's quite uh, uh, popular approach. Uh, uh, let's take Scrum. So Scrum is a set of processes, but at mm -hmm. the same time, uh, there's nothing wrong. Or uh, actually, this is the point that uh, uh, Scrum is uh, uh, different in in different teams. So uh, every team is implementing Scrum slightly differently, and this is okay. Um, and uh, if you think uh, of this in a um, process uh, uh, kind of way, uh, you will see that this is the same process, but uh, uh, those are different versions of the processes. Mm -hmm. um, they are being tailored to, uh, to a specific need. And, and, and this is great. That, that's how, how processes should be. OK. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Scrum, because I was also wondering, you know, we've mentioned Scrum and Agile a few times here already. And there's this one part uh, in the Agile manifesto that kind of comes to well it comes to my mind because like, i've read and researched the agile manifesto but there are you know managers who live and breathe agile right and doing that means you know remembering what's in the agile manifesto there's this one part in there and you know i'm not going to pretend that i know this by heart i'm going to pull up a, a quote here right so the agile manifesto says that we value individuals and interactions over processes and tools so now I wonder, how would you kind of marry the two? That on the one hand, I, I think we've established that processes can be very, very important. On the other hand, the Agile Manifesto says this. So how would you address this? So th there's no contradiction, really. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, it's true that uh, you should value individuals and interactions. But uh, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, nothing about uh, not valuing processes and tools. Um, uh, so this is uh, uh, quite uh, normal in most cases, if you think really deep about this. Um, so developers or technical managers should, should uh, uh, find, find this familiar uh, that uh, you may have automated deploys uh, mm -hmm. to, to the production environment. And this is how things usually get deployed. But uh, uh, at the same time, this doesn't mean that you are not allowed to do things manually. Uh, if you feel that uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, mm -hmm. this is needed. So uh, it's it's really the same. Processes uh, uh, should work, but uh, whenever there uh, are individual interactions that uh, uh, may be uh, uh, more appropriate in a situation to do things uh, manually or to uh, uh, focus on them, then processes uh, uh, should always be of lesser importance. Well, mm -hmm. in fact, you, you, you can say that uh, one of the um, key things about uh, good processes is that uh, you should always allow uh, common sense to trump your processes. Uh -huh. Okay, And I that see. should be so... known to, to everyone who, who is in the process. So if, if someone uh, thinks that in this particular case uh, uh, I should do things differently, then uh, he should know or, he sh or she should know that uh, this is an option. Of okay. course, under certain circumstances. All right. So still, you know, so yeah, it's, I think the key point here is that, you know, it doesn't say that processes aren't important. And, you know, based on what you said earlier, still, you know, you're using tailored processes, for example, in your work. So it's still valuing individuals and interactions with them. I mean, let me know if I'm over-interpreting here, but it sounds like you're, you're valuing them like over the process itself, right? Not at all. This is uh, this is right. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So you know, speaking of your experience, on the one hand, of course, you're you know you're managing the people within the company within uh, STX Next, or like I should say, uh, the the Vrostov branch to to some extent. Then I was thinking, on the other hand, you have you're in contact with a lot of external organizations, right? We work with you know external clients, and you personally, you know, you get a peek into what they're doing as an organization. You get a peek into their processes. So what do you usually see there? Do you usually see, I don't know, a lot of bad processes that lead to complexity? Do you see not a lot of processes and more processes could be implemented? What, what's usually there? So whenever I have contact with, uh, with startups, uh, uh, like real startups, uh, uh, only uh, testing their, uh, their business hypothesis, 
uh, they are usually lacking processes and uh, that makes mm -hmm. perfect sense um, mm -hmm. uh, the complexity is uh, uh, not that uh, large so uh, so it, it doesn't make sense to to uh, make process also if you have only a couple of people involved then uh, usually don't need processes to to manage mm -hmm. that um, then there's scaled up startups. So uh, startups that are uh, way bigger, they are still startups in some way, uh, but the complexity goes up. And uh, uh, most of them are, are often neglecting the need uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, organizing work around processes. Um, until the work uh, is being impeded so often that it paralyzes the company. Or mm -hmm. some, sometimes, equally often, uh, a wake-up call comes uh, uh, in a form of, of like some some serious incident uh, that happens on a production, or or some okay. um, uh, security breach, or or data leak, so some some kind of uh, uh, that kind of event, um, and and this is when uh, uh, you start to think really in that kind of organization that we can't go on without processes. Yeah, and then at, at that point, I think the question becomes, why didn't we have a process for this, right? Why did we allow this to happen? So, you know, I think there is this risk and certainly, you know, there are some organizations that have this risk and may not even know it. So like in your estimation, what is this kind of point at which I'm going from a startup to a scale up? At what point do I really should I really start thinking? You know, now is the time to focus on the processes. Is it based on headcount? Is it based on the growth of, of certain departments? How would you define that threshold? So the best metrics is complexity, uh, uh, because complexity uh, can mean different things. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have, uh, uh, if you're uh, growing. Uh, uh, number wise uh, uh, head wise so uh, you you get uh, more and more people involved uh, uh, in uh, in your work then uh, complexity obviously goes up um, but uh, if uh, your company still has um, uh, 15 people but the product mm -hmm. you are developing is getting more and more complex uh, more and more users are interacting with this uh, uh, with it and uh, I don't know, infrastructure gets more complicated and mm -hmm. complexity grows there uh, it's also a moment to implement processes so uh, mm -hmm. wherever complexity uh, uh, grows uh, uh, it's a sign that uh, we need some uh, some processes um, yeah. I think I could give an example from from you know from my team for example and uh, one point at which I noticed that it's a good time to start thinking about processes is when more than one person starts performing a certain task. So for example, more than one person starts writing and publishing blog posts or writing and publishing social media posts, for example, that, that's the point at which, at least you know, in my experience, the more people do the same thing, the more comes the need to kind of standardize the way to do it. Yeah, so uh, uh, you made a good point that uh, processes also uh, uh, really helps in um, uh, sharing good practices. Two people doing the same thing, uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, publishing, writing and publishing posts, um, mm -hmm. uh, is a great uh, opportunity to, to share good practices and to improve your own process learning from others. And it, it works, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in fact, uh, really well. Uh, uh, of course, if you don't allow uh, the process to, to uh, ossify to, to make uh, uh, rules very rigid and okay. uh, prohibit any experimentation. Uh, as long as, uh, as experiments are, are still welcomed, uh, this is really uh, a great uh, uh, way to, to implement processes. Okay, so now let's connect this back to software development then. On the one hand, you mentioned you know that the top kind of processes to implement if you don't have them are onboarding, offboarding, review. On the other hand, is there anything specific for software development, any processes where you think it's especially useful to exchange these best practices? It is, and uh, well, till now we only touched uh, startups, uh, mm -hmm. but of course uh, we, we've worked with uh, uh, different organizations too. So um, uh, between startups and, uh, and uh, corporate world, there's, there's still plenty of room. And uh, uh, for example, many established product companies with uh, uh, software as a service products, for example, mm -hmm. uh, are living there. And um, um, in those kind of companies, especially if they are uh, 
technology focused like the owners the the founders uh, um, uh, are uh, at least some of them uh, with technical background uh, this usually produces a, an organization in which uh, uh, the best processes are in the area of, of engineering uh, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the developers who uh, may even think that the uh, processes are not something for me are uh, creating processes uh, uh, daily so we already mentioned that uh, scrum something uh, uh, which uh, uh, with which most of us uh, uh, are interacting uh, uh, it, it's already a, a setup of processes but uh, uh, also things like uh, 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 branching workflows for example branching strategy oh. uh, okay. there are uh, different strategies but uh, each of them is uh, in fact a kind of process kind of uh, steps uh, uh, one after each other that uh, all of us will uh, will do when we want to um, um, do our job properly so uh, you can say that every developer that uh, uh, is involved in discussion uh, uh, how many code reviews should happen, when they should happen, who should do it inside of the team okay. or outside of the team. Uh, uh, everybody who, who uh, voiced their, um, uh, uh, their thoughts about it uh, mm -hmm. is already creating a process uh, or trying to improve a process. And the same goes with uh, uh, other workflow uh, things. So, for example, um, uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, uh, delivery. Uh, those are things that uh, are also uh, uh, very process-like. Um, on a technical level, you can also say that uh, uh, QA is uh, uh, QA sure. strategies, uh, quality assurance is something that uh, requires processes, and uh, uh, usually in teams there. Are uh, a lot of discussions on how uh, QA should be done, at which stage. Uh, maybe if, if we have a couple of teams working on the same product, should it only take place on a team level or also um, uh, on a higher level? Uh, all of this also creates a process or, or a couple of processes, uh, actually. Uh, okay. Release planning and road mapping of the product, This is uh, th those are another two, mm. uh, uh, two areas which uh, uh, are often uh, uh, quite well organized, uh, um, especially if we, uh, again, have a founder who uh, has the authority uh, and, uh, uh, and the technical knowledge, uh, he or she really pushes towards uh, uh, implementation of processes because this is tightly connected with automation. And you want okay. to have a, 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 your preferred uh, uh, setup, uh, a, a, let's say, environment of uh, of different systems working for you, making your uh, life easier uh, as a developer. So this part uh, in, in most of the product, uh, tech product oriented uh, uh, companies is uh, uh, well defined and uh, well structured. Um, okay. uh, I find it quite surprising that uh, in the same companies, um, non-engineer uh, engineering parts uh, of the organization uh, uh, often lacks uh, uh, the same approach. So uh, okay. when we uh, start to think about non-technical things, sometimes we, we suddenly forget that uh, that processes can can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's why, for example, in in uh, many uh, engagements, uh, it's uh, it's me or or uh, uh, our people uh, inside of the team who are uh, in fact asking for for their uh, accesses to code repositories to uh, to different uh, tools are being revoked. So uh, oh. usually the, the, the that kind of process uh, of uh, of exiting uh, out of engagement uh, is uh, is not that great on uh, uh, in some of the companies. Okay, so you know a kind of image is building in my head of you know both within engineering and outside of it the larger an organization is the more people you have you know well generally performing tasks as a business does but then you know based on what you're saying every task is a kind of process every task that gets done you know regularly or you know more than once could be turned into something that's a little bit more a, a set of best practices for example it, it could be codified in some way so then i think kind of the major challenge when you're looking at it all from a bird's eye view is how do you make all of these professionals kind of 
talk to each other and exchange these best practices so that all of the processes can you know gradually improve and do you have any methods that work for that so a good fund fundamentals uh, are really important so mm -hmm. if you have a uh, um, uh, kind of feedback culture and uh, continuous improvement uh, culture mm -hmm. inside of the organization it makes uh, it's way easier to uh, to uh, get people on board uh, in mm -hmm. in designing processes and improving them. Um, and another thing uh, is uh, uh, um, really down to earth think uh, uh, tools uh, that that help you uh, mm -hmm. work with, with processes. So uh, there are uh, numerous tools that uh, that can help you in organizing processes or implementing uh, uh, processes. Okay. Uh, inside of the organization and and uh, make them uh, run smoothly. Okay, any particular tool you would recommend? I know we're using one within SDX, so maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, we're using Process Plan uh, mm. uh, at SDX, and uh, this is a very helpful tool, uh, uh, especially when when a number of people who usually uh, don't connect with each other. Uh, uh regularly needs to tick their own boxes for mm -hmm. something to happen uh, and uh, um, again onboarding is a is a great example so um, uh, there are a number of things uh, uh, within different roles that uh, have to be done uh, if you want the offboarding uh, of someone to to be uh, successful so uh, process plan is really a great tool because uh, it both uh, uh, offers uh, enough power and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's uh, um, it can be uh, used in in a very simple way. Um, so it's if you could to... you know if you could say a little bit about how it works from the perspective of a user or somebody designing the process, what does it look like? Yeah, so you rightfully mentioned two perspectives. Uh, one is a process designer, someone who mm -hmm. uh, uh, who uh, uh, want to see a process uh, as a uh, as an algorithm, a, a set of uh, uh, steps. Uh, so uh, that that's one view also in process plan. Uh, this really looks like, like a, a very long uh, uh, set of uh, rectangles connected with uh, with arrows, and those are steps by steps mm -hmm. what happens next. And the second view uh, uh, is from uh, a user perspective, an actor who are who is inside of a process or usually inside of, of multiple processes. And from uh, from their perspective, it looks like uh, like a task list. So you get a list of tasks uh, that you have to uh, do, and uh, when you uh, do what's described in the task, uh, then you you click done, and then magic happens. So the process knows uh, who should receive which information um, yeah. about uh, about this task being completed and content that you've inputted, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, um, uh, creates new tasks for uh, different people, and so on. So, um, um, yeah, I, this I is uh, again so, something something really nice that you're doing only your part. And if you don't yeah. if you don't want to, you don't have to get really deep. What will happen next? It will happen on yeah. on, on its own, uh, uh, unless you want to improve something. Then you can uh, uh, just switch to uh, to the vis visualization of the whole process and. Mm -hmm. and then um, uh, then try to uh, think about improving it. Yeah, from my limited experience with it, I, I use it mostly as a user. And you know what I liked is that, it, it, like in concrete terms, you get an email, and you just get all of the context that you need for a certain task. And you get an instruction what you're supposed to do, and then a button that you can click that it's done. But on the other hand, you know, as a person potentially designing a process, I really like the visual way. And you know, just by the way, uh, we're not affiliated with Process Plan in any way. We just really like the tool, so we're spending a few minutes talking about it. So you know, you can you can look it up. You, you can say we sent you. Uh, maybe they'll smile back at us. But okay, just coming back, I really like that it's it's not like a list, but it's more of a diagram, right? So you, it shows the complexity. It shows the branching paths. It shows who is responsible for which part of the process. So you know, you might want to to look that up for your own processes. But just so we're not too biased, maybe there's an alternative tool that you could offer or you know some other way to, to start thinking about processes, maybe in a visual way. Yeah, so the, the way of, of viewing processes uh, as a diagram uh, uh, actually goes uh, really deep. And uh, mm -hmm. 
it, it started uh, uh, as a pen and paper activity, and uh, this still oh. uh, uh, the, the, this still uh, is the, the the best way to to start designing your processes. Uh, very similar to to any other uh, prototypes. Uh, uh, you start with pen and paper, and uh, and only then you. Uh, uh, you turn into uh, uh, you switch to to some kind of tools, um, but also it, I think the, the the whole thing are about processes uh, uh, really uh, got its speed uh, uh, when uh, uh, a big factory started to uh, to uh, be, uh, be become the thing and, and become organized so uh, mm -hmm. some processes started to happen but uh, at some point uh, uh, everybody lost track on uh, of what exactly is happening so a uh, uh, um, huge area of, of uh, process analysis and process improvement uh, uh, that kind of knowledge was uh, uh, was the result and uh, um, mapping processes was uh, uh, an activity that uh, uh, that was developed uh, um, i think in in, in 60s or, or 70s mm -hmm. maybe uh, also the, the groundwork for uh, uh, meta processes that improves other processes were were laid down uh, there um yeah, and uh, it, it's still useful. It, it's still useful to to do something uh, called uh, process mapping or or okay. uh, value stream mapping. That this is more of a mm -hmm. of a Kaizen word, but uh, or, or lean word. But it, it, it's really um, uh, it, it's really useful. And uh, all the tools like process plan uh, uh, are based on on uh, on this knowledge. So mm -hmm. if you would look uh, at uh, Paper version of uh, of process uh, uh, visualization. So, if someone is mapping processes uh, with use of uh, pen, paper, uh, and uh, and uh, post-it notes, um, uh, this would look uh, more or less similar to to what we can see in uh, in process plan. Mm -hmm. But of course, process plan is not the only tool uh, that that you can use. That there's really a ton of it. Um, Maybe uh, it's worth to mention uh, uh, really different tools that that can also be used, and I'm thinking about okay. productivity tools. Uh, those okay. are also quite uh, quite popular right now. Uh, uh, things like OmniFocus or Things Free uh, and and other uh, uh, like it. So those are tools that. Uh, um, you can say that they are to-do lists on on steroids, or uh, okay. to-do lists plus uh, plus workflows, um, and also you can also use them to create your small processes for even for for yourself. Um, so, for example, I'm using Things Free uh, uh, for for the last. Uh, I've been using it for for the last couple of uh, of months, and um, I have. Uh, Templates of projects that I copy mm -hmm. and uh, and start uh, whenever uh, uh, I have a need for for something to happen. Um, so, for example, um, if I want to uh, start up a new project, then uh, of course I, I would like to have a proper kickoff. And uh, uh, what actually to to do when you want to do a kickoff? I can figure it out uh, uh, again uh, because I'm Each not starting. Time. Yeah, just I'm not exerting this process. effort to figure it out. Yeah, uh, and I tend to forget. It's not like I'm starting uh, uh, a new project every week, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that that's why I, I have a separate uh, template uh, for it, and uh, uh, I'm just um, creating a new instance of it, um, mm -hmm. and I end up with a with a clear uh, uh, to do list with things to do to successfully uh, kick off a project. And this is also kind of process uh, in a form of a, of a to-do list, uh, but, uh, but but still a great process, very useful. Yeah, you know, I think before this conversation, I never thought about this in the sense because processes seem like a kind of big thing. It seemed like something that you know people are in your kind of position, the managers are are more involved in. But then I when I started thinking, you know, every repeatable task is a process or like every task template could be called a process or is a manif manifestation of a process, then, you know, they really are everywhere. And, you know, I have some templates of my own that I think I'm going to give a look after this to see how I can improve them and, and just save myself this, this mental effort going forward. 
Yeah, okay. there's, there's tons of uh, uh, good lectures about uh, being productive, um, mm -hmm. uh, getting things done and, uh, and saving time. And uh, mm -hmm. most of them uh, are uh, mentioning processes, some kind of processes, your own processes of, of effectively doing things like okay. mini miniature loops uh, that you're in every day. And uh, uh, if you get that loop right, you get uh, a ton of time left to, to spend on whatever you like. Well, I think it would be great if you could link to some of those maybe after we're finished, for example, in the comments on, on LinkedIn, for example, where I, I hope some of you are, are watching. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to post it on every channel, so uh, we recommend following us, for example, on LinkedIn. Look, Machi, we can go two ways from here. And just for the guys uh, and gals watching, uh, if you have a comment or a question, we're probably at the very last moment when you could ask something. And I'm thinking, Machi, would you have the time for one last question before we finish up? Sure, sure. OK, so you know, just to, to wrap this up and to make this super, super useful for the people listening, if you were to kind of encapsulate this in a nutshell and just point out like the most common any patterns or the most common mistakes, I, I, I still am not super sold on the term any pattern, so I'm just going to say mistakes. So what are the co most common mistakes that you see with regards to processes that, you know, if I remember one thing from this live session, then I should pay attention to this. So what would that be? So anti-patterns, that's a really interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I, I could give you a couple of examples. But I, uh, if you're uh, asking about a thing that's uh, uh, one takeout for, from this, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, talk, then I would say that's, uh, that the most important thing are, are the base rules for, for creating uh, good processes. And, uh, and those rules are, are, are quite simple. So uh, first rule is that uh, um, common sense should always trump the processes. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that processes are uh, uh, subject to, uh, to change. So uh, mm -hmm. you are expected to improve processes and uh, uh, not as a manager, but uh, as a member of the organization. So uh, uh, you should try to improve way of doing things inside of the organization, no matter uh, what position you're working uh, uh, at. Okay. And probably the, the, the uh, third rule uh, would be that uh, uh, everybody should know that uh, they are allowed uh, uh, not only to um, uh, improve processes, propose changes, but also to uh, diverge from uh, from the process. So when you, uh, th this is kind of counter counterintuitive, but uh, mm -hmm. if you're uh, designing a process, uh, you have to remember that uh, uh, those processes can be like uh, rays that it is possible to diverge from. You have mm -hmm. to have in mind that people will diverge from them. Uh, mm -hmm. And they should be allowed to do so, but uh, uh, of course they, they they should also know that uh, if you're uh, uh, deciding that this time I will do uh, this thing my way, then um, uh, firstly someone will can come later on and uh, uh, and uh, 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 look into it and uh, ask questions why why this was more effective, more appropriate to do the things your way and the second thing you you, you should uh, know that uh, uh, you're part of a greater whole so uh, you should pay attention to other processes that uh, are reliant on your process um, mm -hmm. think of interfaces so you, you can um, uh, to some extent treat your process as a black box you can do something mm -hmm. differently but uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the contact points with other processes uh, the results should be should be the same so uh, I think those are most important things uh, uh, out of the stock. Okay, great. I'll I'll tell people viewing the recording to make sure that they don't miss the ending because that was I think a lot of value in uh, short times. And when, when, what I'm getting from this is like guidelines, not guardrails, right? So it's uh, it's about guiding actions and not dictating them. Yep, exactly. Okay, right, great. All right, so I think if, if you if you're interested in some kind of anti patterns, I, I I can also mm -hmm. share some. I'm just wondering because we've been at this for over an hour, but I guess we could have we could find time for one if you're still uh, if you still have the time. 
one. So hmm. you'll have to pick and choose. I'm sorry. So I think the the, the, the most funny one uh, uh, is really technical. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, uh, I heard uh, uh, from the developers, uh, some of them working uh, uh, at a certain company, uh, a, a large company. Uh, you, you can say a corporation that they often had to uh, book a place uh, uh, in a queue to be allowed to merge something, uh, 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 merge their code to to the release branch. So. Oh. Uh, uh, of course, the farther you were uh, in this queue, um, uh, the more conflicts uh, uh, you you would have to uh, solve uh, to merge your code. So, uh, uh, a deficient process of uh, of uh, branching workflow um, made it uh, uh, branching workflow or, or the even a, a one uh, uh, one layer above it. Uh, so merging of the branches, it really makes it a pain to 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 work. If uh, uh, you're not only coding, but you have to uh, uh, book your place to to add your code to to the actual product, this the, the, this was really frustrating. So that that's mm -hmm. that's uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, example of of how how you should not do uh, processes. Okay, so don't tell people to get in line to merge. <laughs> okay. All right. Understood. Look, uh, we don't want to make this too long for you viewers out there. We've already been talking for uh, for over an hour, and you know, for everybody joining us, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have more questions for Martin, if you'd like Martin to go into more detail about this, the best way to do so would be to reach out directly to him, look him up on LinkedIn, send him a message. I'm sure Martin will be uh, happy to uh, to respond to them. And you know, if you're within SDX, just shoot them a message on our on our company uh, messenger. But you know that. Now, in terms of our further live sessions, if you like this, then the best way to get more is to follow us on LinkedIn, where we will be announcing all of those in advance. So then you can be sure to never miss a session. And we intend to do these regularly, for at least for the couple of following weeks. We already have some topics lined up that I think you're going to like, especially if you're managing and delivering software projects. So just make sure you don't miss the next one. And Martin, is there anything, any last final thoughts that you'd like to add before we have to wrap this up? Well, please contact me if uh, if you have anything on your mind, uh, not necessarily questions, but um, I, I'm really happy to discuss about uh, uh, this stuff. So so feel free to, uh, to uh, reach out. Yeah, exactly. And you know, if you have enough questions or if it's a larger conversation, we can always do another live session to dig deeper into that, right? Uh, I wouldn't mind that one bit because this has been wonderful. So thank you again, Marcin. Thank you again to everybody tuning in. Have a wonderful Monday afternoon, Polish time at least. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> OK, thanks. Bye. Bye.